Hello my friends, it's Joe with Martinson Manufacturing. Uh, it's been about a year since I did my last shop tour and so much has changed and I'm excited to, to share uh, all that with you. So it's time to do another shop tour. Um, just kind of a heads up, uh, I'll probably take some time talking about uh, each little station in detail here. If you want to see more about my business where I uh, create and sell 3D printed parts, then you can check out my uh, 3D printed tour farm video. I'll just link it up here. And you can see the printers and everything like that. But here in my shop, I'm not gonna really show anything about that business. Uh, it's gonna be more uh, other tools that I have and other things that I'm prototyping and working on. So kind of my, my business philosophy for, um, yeah, kind of a mantra or whatever is to create automate and then delegate. So I wanna create and come up with a product. I want to automate a system behind that product. And then once that system has been automated, I want to delegate it to someone else, have them run it, then I can chase that next product idea and do the same thing over and over. So with my 3D printed parts that I sell, that has been created, it's been automated, and it's been uh, delegated to someone else, and that's in someone else's basement. Um, but today we're in my basement um, talking about other stuff. So um, let's get started with that. This basement has looked, oh my gosh, um, I'll show some pictures, I'll splice them in, but this thing has looked completely different. I'll kind of pan around a little bit here. So when we got here, uh, I think there was like two overhead lights, uh, so it was really dark. Now I got 10 of them. Uh, the drywall only came down halfway down and they had some water damage uh, a long time ago. Since then, the issue's been resolved. Uh, back in this corner, there was just a whole bunch of stuff piled up there. And uh, this was the area that I worked on first. Uh, this was kind of the first woodworking area. I created a little partition wall to keep the dust from migrating that way. Later on, I had to create these uh, um, blinds or whatever you want to call them to prevent uh, dust from coming this way. But and then the floor, painted the floor with a nice uh, concrete epoxy. So I finally got the shop looking to where um, I want it. And I like having a nice looking workspace. A lot of people ask me like, why are you spending all this time and money? But I like having a nice workshop. Uh, so starting from the very beginning, I am in my basement. I don't know if you guys know that or not. Maybe it looks different on camera, but I'm in a basement just like, you know, probably the rest of you guys. Uh, so coming down the basement store, uh, the stairs, or we're starting off here. This is just a shelf I put together to house all my uh, material for my Glowforge. A lot of MDF, a lot of wood, a lot of acrylic, everything um, I need for there is here. Um, one thing I'd recommend if you do a lot of laser cutting and you have a bunch of scrap pieces, store them vertically. Oh my gosh, it makes the world a difference. Obviously you lose kind of a lot of shelving area, but the ability to just throw something in and find a scrap size that you need yeah it's uh you should you should do it, it uh, <laughs> it's a big difference i love it uh so over here is pretty much everything i need to either do uh, a youtube video or a product photography shoot i just got done shooting some um, product photos like four hours ago um, so I have all my lights, tripods, more lights, pretty much everything I need for that is, is here. Um, up here is a Einscan 3D scanner. Uh, that's fun, I use that for holster production, which I'll get into uh, in a little bit. So that's that. I love little lean improvements. If you wanna see what I did for my batteries. So these run on batteries, these are all charged. If one's dead, I'll flip them around. That way I know if it's dead or if it's charged. So I love just geeky little uh, small improvements to make my life easier. So my workstation, I got uh, pretty much a basic, it's about the uh, best personal computer you get. Then I threw a bunch of added extra stuff in there to make it a little more beefy. Um, here is, uh, yeah, just kind of my workstation. I do a lot of uh, 3D modeling. I'm on Fusion 360 and Kira pretty much all day long. Those are open just constantly. And then emails, that's kind of the boring stuff. Um, I'll show you this real quick. This is uh, the mold and the tool pathing for one of the holster molds um, that we're doing right now. So 
it's fun to, I really love this stuff. I just, I geek out about it. Obviously it's not part of my business. This is another business venture that I'm pursuing with uh, my brother-in-law, but really fun, geeky stuff that I just, I just love a lot. Um, that's kind of a personal uh, printer, Ender 3 I keep close by me. It's kind of down right now. Glowforge, so I'm on, I'm on a 3D printer in Glowforge pretty regularly, just uh, prototyping random stuff normally. Um, I just started selling these uh, tall window inserts. There's actually one here. So if you want to vent out your window, um, and you don't want a piece of wood in your window, I've been making these and selling those online. And so I'll cut it to size. I'll stick it in my Glowforge uh, through here, through the slot, and then I'll cut out either a, a four inch hole or a six inch hole. If someone wants uh, a four inch, um, a four inch port for their window insert, I'll just kind of bring it in here. If they have a, a wider one for a six inch, then I'd flip this around. And then this is wider for the six inch. So put that in, it's always in the exact same spot. And then in the app, I have the coordinates of where to put that circle and it goes in the same spot every time. And then I just use a little, uh, kind of like a little sawhorse here to kind of keep the material uh, stabilized so it doesn't shift. So I've been using that um, for uh, window inserts a lot lately. Uh, let's head back to this area. So if we <coughs> kind of look, the basement's kind of split in two halves. Uh, we have this half, which is the shop, uh, fun stuff. And then on this side is more uh, personal stuff, uh, washer and dryer, you know, all that good stuff. Um, here, <laughs> business stuff kind of metastasizes and just kind of takes over more and more personal stuff as it goes on. My wife's patient though, so that's great. Uh, I have a product, uh, mason jar brackets that I've been selling. This is used for staging for product photography for that. Um, whiteboard, I need to jot some stuff down. I'll talk more about the CNC in a little bit. Um, so here's another little area. Again, it's more kind of personal stuff, but this area, ooh, vacuum former. I wanna show you this vacuum former, it's really cool. So let me get this going. I don't use this for anything vacuum formed, but I'm just gonna test it because it's really fun. So on this one, you just draw it down. Uh, the material is what creates the vacuum seal. And then you slide the oven over the top. Let's see if we're ready to go. Okay, so now it's counting down. It'll beep at me in a minute. Um, see, I'll talk about this first, I guess. So I just like having cool tools in the shop. What can I say? That's, that's about it. I've always wanted to have a vacuum former. And then uh, my brother-in-law wanted to start making holsters. Uh, my brother-in-law is a firearms instructor and he wanted to open up an online store and start selling holsters and things like that. And I'm like, you know, that sounds like a good excuse to buy a vacuum former. So, um, so I got that. I use this for prototyping any type of harebrained idea. I need to prototype. I've made a few, just a lot of things for myself. Um, holders, um, I'll show a picture here of like a little end mill tray that I made, um, but it's fun, nice to have for anything that might come up. Uh, so over here <coughs> is uh, an area that I'm using for, is that thing done already? Let's see, I don't think it is. No, nope. I'll give you some more time to cook. Hopefully I don't forget about it. Um, so this area is for uh, 3D printing services. So I have a business where I sell 3D printed products. I, it's just 100% product based, but I figure since I have the resources and the skill set, might as well offer services. So um, I haven't offered those services yet, but I'm gonna start uh, probably in the next month or so. So I'm kinda clearing out a space for myself here to offer those services. Um, I just picked up an Alagu Saturn resin printer, which I've been absolutely loving. I tried Creality's resin printer like a couple of years ago when I was in an apartment. I just wasn't set up for it. I hated the experience, but now I'm set up for it. Got the Mercury Plus wash station. I got a, a trash can right there so I can just throw stuff away. Uh, a nice kind of uh, waterproof uh, kind of mat here to clean stuff up because it gets dirty. 
So really been enjoying resin printing. Holy crap, that's been a, a lot of fun. What blows my mind about this is printing 12 parts takes the same amount of time as printing like one part. So that's been amazing. Um, yeah, Ender 3, Ender 5, Creality, V2. I don't care about the V2, but uh, CR10, by the way. Um, so yeah, let's see this guy here if he's ready yet. Okay, he is totally ready. Vacuum. Woo! Gosh, I love that. That just doesn't get old, ever. Like, ever. I, bet, I thought about just creating a YouTube channel of just vacuum forming stuff that would be so satisfying just to watch that all day long so obviously this i don't use this for anything oops let me uh yeah i don't use this for anything it's just i just wanted to demo it for you because it's cool so i'll turn that off all right so back over to the other side now i'm walking around with a corded mic so hopefully i don't trip i need to get a wire a wireless one okay so this space <clears throat> this is used for holster manufacturing right now that might come as a surprise to you because I haven't talked anything about that in any of my videos but again like I said my my brother Justin uh, brother-in-law Justin um, approached me like a year ago and he's like dude we should make holsters and I'm like we should that sounds awesome so we're making holsters now we just started selling them uh just recently so let me walk through the process <coughs> with you on that so we would take a piece of kydex from down here throw it on our t-shirt press 340 degrees let that cook for uh, several minutes <coughs> then we'd take out uh that warm flimsy piece of uh, kydex we would drape it over our mold this mold has been uh, milled on my cnc router over there which i'll talk about more in a minute so they'll drape that over here pull this down as soon as this hits the hdpe it creates the vacuum seal <coughs> put these on for a little safe measure and then we can as that's cool and then forming we can move over to other things then once um, this is done we take this piece off then we bring it over to our CNC router here. So I'll talk about this. Um, boy, I love this enclosure. I have a video on this enclosure. If you want to hear a little bit more about that, maybe I'll, I'll link it up here or something. But <clears throat> it was imperative to keep all the dust in because I'm in a basement for sure. Um, let me. T so when we did these holsters, we did so many prototypes, so many stinking prototypes. Let me show you the prototyping bin. <laughs> So here's all these prototypes. There's just, there's tons of them. And there's even more molds down there. So I don't know how many of that is, but it's a lot. And we've done all those prototypes before even selling one because we wanted to get this down. We don't want to just sell a product. We want to sell a nice precision product that has a lot of thought behind it. That's perfect that the customer's not just going to like, but love. So we've been prototyping like crazy. And every time we would put a new mold on the CNC machine, we would screw it down onto the bed in a different location. And so my zero, my origin point was different for every single project. And then if you need to come back to it like a day later after you shut your machine off, it's like, what the heck was my, my origin point? And you can't remember what it was and you got to re-zero it. And then you're slightly off if you need to uh, trim the mold a little bit more or if you need to trim your formed piece of kydex, um, this could be off a little bit. So finally got smart and said, all right, we're going to have one fixed origin point for every single project, no matter what it is. And it's going to be five in the X, five in the Y period done no more guesswork what our zero is so the only thing we have to zero now is our z so that has really helped to standardize our process i wish i would have done it like a year ago <clears throat> so i'll show you that process here this is the onefinity uh version by the way so um i'm in five so to zero out i'll just go five in the x Five in the Y, then I'll just zero it out on my screen here. 
boom, there's my X and Y point, easy. It's the same every single time. Again, I wish I would have done that a long time ago. Uh, let me demo this for you. I usually have a hose uh, hooked up uh, for projects, uh, but I'll leave it off because it's just cooler to see, you can see more. So let me throw, okay, zeroed it out there, so I'm good to go. <clears throat> let me throw this on here. using these clamps for the moment what I'd like to do is put these clamps on the side for future so it's just quick <clears throat> all right so that's locked down should be good to go all right so let's cut this out uh, one thing I have on the router the router is hooked up to my vacuum obviously the vacuum's not going to do anything right now so as soon as the router turns on it hits a vacuum switch turns on the vacuum so that's a nice feature um, okay, I think we are good to go. Let's close the lid. This has helped um, considerably on the noise, which is uh, amazing. I was going for uh, to contain the dust, but then containing the noise has been a sweet little byproduct. Okay, so I feel like I'm forgetting something. Turn the router on. <clears throat> and here we go. So first it's going to drill two holes and then back out of the way. Safety glasses. Safety first. All right. I don't know where they are. All right. I have a nice little clip for it right here, but they're not right there. So I'll just pin it down. All right, <clears throat> so I had inserted that uh, M0 command in between these two uh, uh, programs here. So it's just waiting for me to hit start again. Hopefully it doesn't uh, hit the screw. Now we'll run through the rest of the holes. And then after that, it'll trim out the profile. <clears throat> been experimenting with a few different end mills. Right now I'm using a straight flute. Um, I have been using an O flute the whole time. But I saw some other people getting some good results with straight flutes, so I thought I'd give it a shot. Still getting some rough cuts on the edges, we'll have to uh, uh, figure it out. So if you have any good end mill recommendations, let me know. Yikes, that was close. Okay, router off. <clears throat> okay, so now we can take this off. It's there just to hold it in place while it gets cut. <clears throat> so now we have the cutout for our holster. And this is, gosh. Those holes are perfectly placed in these little bump outs here. And that's what we want. We want consistency, repeatability, every time. Oh, that feels good. Um, Cause we didn't have that for all the other holsters that we've done. So um, the next step would be to take it over to that uh, polishing wheel. We'd clean up the edges so we don't have any sharp edges. Uh, then I guess this has turned into like a holster manufacturing video, um, but this is what I'm up to. So. Then we take it over to our hair straightener. It's kind of a funny tool, but that's what pretty much everyone in the industry uses, which is funny. So we'd clamp that down, let it get nice and toasty warm. Then we would just fold this over our gun here, fold it over, clamp it, let it cool, put some fasteners in it, and then we would end up with 
with this guy. Ooh, it just sounds good. So that's that. Um, we have a few different models we're working on. Um, and uh, we'll have a bunch more models that will coming out too. So if you want to check out my brother-in-law's uh, website, Excel Tactical Solutions, I'll link it uh, down below too if you want to check out his site. If you need any personal training, any uh, firearms and training, you're in Wisconsin, look them up. You can check out the holsters on that site. Okay, so um, this is the official woodworking area for anything that we need to be doing. I geek out about my fasteners. I want them all in the right spot. Um, everything in its own place, a place for everything and everything in its place. So I kind of went to the extreme on these guys here and just labeled and seg segmented everything. But if I have some screws, I need to put them away. I don't want to just throw them. I want to, there's a place where it goes. And uh, I hate looking for stuff. You just waste so much time looking for stuff. So I spent a lot of time organizing. I eventually want just a whole wall with every fastener you could think it would be awesome. Um, obviously some wood clamps, levels, things like that. Um, I did put up this little WEN air filtration device. I think it helps a little bit. That's hooked to a little remote that's over there. Um, I said before that I'm working on uh, making window inserts for people right now. Uh, I'll show you a little bit about that. I made a jig, a cross cut sled, cross cut sled jig for cutting these bad boys. So if someone gets an order, <clears throat> I have a bunch of uh, pieces down there with masking on it. So I'd grab one, measure it out, throw it on my sled. This has just been so amazing because a lot of these things are kind of long and it gets weird. So yeah, throw it through, cut it out, get the right size that I need. Obviously take it to the Glowforge, cut a little hole in it. Um, and then I just package it over here um, so I've been keeping busy with that. Uh, thickness planer over there, which I've like really never touched. I don't do anything with that at the moment. Uh, this saw is hooked up to another uh, vacuum, uh, vacuum switch into a vacuum. So as soon as I turn this on, the vacuum turns on. So that's really nice. I have all my machines hooked up to their own vacuums. Uh, boy, this thing took forever to build. I don't even want to talk about it, but I'm, I'm glad I have it. Um, just a nice uh, assembly table. Or, um, you know, if I have a glue up and I need to clamp it down, having these things is really great for that. Uh, let's see. So, yeah, I love just having everything in its place. Spend a lot of time um, creating little custom um, hanging doodads for all my tools up here. I love the French cleat system. If I ever want to rearrange any of this, I can just pick it up and move it somewhere else. Um, let's see, the miter saw. This cord's kind of getting in the way a little bit. These things obviously are kicking up dust everywhere. It's annoying. I did my best I could with this. I think I'd like to get some more of these drapes and put them in front to prevent a little bit of this. I do have a foot switch for my vacuum. So that's hooked right up to the back of the miter saw, so that helps <clears throat> a good amount there. And then just uh, miscellaneous storage. There's still stuff I want to organize, but it's, uh, you know, it's good enough for now. And I don't have a business where I create woodworking products, so it's just my own personal thing. Uh, these drapes have been a lifesaver. This is like a drawer hinge for like a, a kitchen drawer. So if I'm in the shop, either sanding on the wheel, cutting wood, close these drapes, keep all the dust contained, um, it's amazing. So I'd recommend that to you if you're looking for a way to contain all your dust. The newest addition that we just added is um, some backdrops for a uh, studio. So we kind of have, the shop can kind of convert into a studio in the matter of minutes. So if I'm shooting a YouTube video, my brother-in-law's down here shooting some videos too, or we need to do a product photo shoot, we need a nice white backdrop, we can pull that down, move benches out of the way. So let me just kind of show you that uh, real quick here. So L, every single workbench is on wheels, which I absolutely love. <clears throat> so let me give cameraman a little bit more room here with this cord so I'll move that 
Let me move this one back first. Just stick this one right back in here. All right, that's good there. I'll turn this one out. So this we just created as a backdrop primarily for my brother-in-law's videos and it looks just flipping sweet. I'll, I'll show a little clip of what his videos look like with this backdrop. Uh, so that's awesome. It can hang stuff on there. We can throw up different lights. Um, let me pull these down here. So if we want to have a white backdrop. Um, if we're doing, yeah, a YouTube video, a product shoot, whatever that is, um, we can pull this down for that. If we need to use that for anything, put that back up. If we decide instead we want gray, we could do that. So I don't know how this looks, but it, yeah, it looks awesome. <laughs> Love having that. Uh, here's gray. hang that back up there too. I'm uh, kind of twisting myself in the cords here. So we got gray. So if we want to, so a bunch of different combinations uh, that we have if we want to do uh, for different videos or product shoots or what have you. So it's pretty amazing that we can have um, all this in a shop and it can convert so quickly. So I'll just kind of put this back up. Oh, other way. All right, so that's that. And then we would just There we go. Lock down wheels, pull stuff back over, and then we got to work in shop again. So, love having everything on wheels. It's, it's amazing. And uh, I'll get that cart in a little bit here. So that's about it for uh, the shop tour. Uh, things are changing in here all the time. It's going to change a lot more as we continue to ramp up with holster production and whatever other crazy hair brain product idea I, I come in contact with. Um, so thanks for hanging out and checking, checking out the shop with me and I'll catch you on the next video.